we now can take Mayor Wheeler from the leaders who haven't talked to the leaders who have talked. Because Mayor Wheeler has given us some time. After five days following those dueling protests in downtown Portland with no police intervention, uh, I'll remind you, the mayor finally gave the media some of his time. He's still talking actually right now. This started at five o'clock. Pat Doris has been listening in, asking questions, was able to ask some questions about the ongoing protests. Pat, correct me if I'm wrong here. We were listening into some of it. The mayor seems to think we can come together in some type of kumbaya moment, is that right? Well, yes, he probably wouldn't use that word, but I think he is using tonight as a chance to try and reset, to say that he's made some mistakes, but now he's gonna be laser focused on both ending the violence of the protests and helping the business community downtown. Here's uh, part of what he had to say. Many of the residents of our city, our mostly white city, have exercised their free speech rights to peacefully protest structural racism in a way that makes me proud to be a Portlander. But these crises have also created an opening for violent extremists to do harm to our city, to scare our core downtown employers late at night, to wreak havoc in an effort to drain city resources, not in an effort to reinvest them. Rising up to decry structural racism is a noble cause. Pulling people from their vehicles and beating them in the streets is a horrific, violent crime. The mayor is calling on all the residents of Portland to rise up as well and to denounce the violence, denounce the destruction from these violent protests. And uh, by the way, just to clarify, he doesn't want, you know, grandmas and grandpas to go out and stand in front of the public buildings, but he wants people to start talking about this. Here's part of what he had to say on that topic. I say rise up. I'm saying let's virtually link arms. Let's come back together as a community. Let's defy the division that we're seeing nationally and say, look, Portland can do better. We, we have a leadership role to play. Um, we can do some great things here, but we also have to acknowledge we've screwed some things up. As the mayor of the city, I take personal responsibility for uh, you know, not being here earlier, not working more closely with the community, not finding ways to address these important issues. But going forward each and every day, I'm going to do my part to lead and I'm asking the community, everyone in the community to join me and help me work with me to solve these problems facing all of us collectively. As far as his plans for the business community downtown, the mayor said he's meeting tomorrow with some of those leaders. But I got to tell you, behind the scenes, I've talked with some of those business leaders. They've been very unhappy. The mayor made some promises a couple of weeks ago. They say he has not followed through. He's talking about um, some cosmetic changes going forward. And I don't know that they're going to be all that impressed. We'll have to wait and see on that. He also did talk about that protest last weekend that had members of the right and the left coming together without police intervention. Here's what he had to say when he was pressed on that. My point about having more real-time accountability is the way this works is a complaint will go to IPR and I will get no more feedback as the police commissioner because I am part of the due process. And I won't hear anything more on that case until it goes through the IPR process and the internal police review process. Uh, and it could be months or longer before I have any information that I can then share with the public. And that just doesn't sit well with me because the images themselves raise re in incredible questions about whether or not we are being effective, whether we are making arrests on a timely basis, whether uh, uh, I and, and uh, other members of the city council are providing the police bureau the resources they need to make those arrests, and so, Dan, I thought you'd appreciate the, the way the mayor got right up to the edge of saying ridiculous and then backed off and said horrific and other things like that. But um, it is interesting. He's he's clearly uh, after 90 days after George Floyd's uh, death, he's trying to do something to get the city back on track and to find a way to end the violent protests, which so far has eluded him.
Dan? You know, not to be critical, but I, I do have a, a question. So, again, I'm just curious. But did he mention anything as to why he waited five days following what was getting a lot of attention with those dueling protests and no police intervention? After all, he is the police commissioner, and it's now nearly a week, and we haven't heard anything from him until now. Did he talk about that? Uh, not directly, although he did say that he has been trying to do too much and that he's been trying to do it on his own. You know, if you think back 90 days, when this all started, he was having news conferences every single morning after the protests to talk about what was going right and what was going wrong. And it wouldn't surprise me if he's just gotten weary over three months, like, uh, you know, so many of the protesters and so many of the police and so many of the community. Um, he may have been trying to figure out what he was going to do. I know that he did meet with the police police chief and he said today that he was given the same explanation the rest of us were uh, that there were just not enough resources so um, I think that he's you know sometimes when you don't have a good answer to some of the questions you're not real eager to get out there and uh, and explain that to the world so mm -hmm. I think that was part of it there's probably a lot of different things going on but he has promised he's going to be much more out in front uh, moving forward and I think we're all looking forward to that yeah for sure makes sense Pat Doris thank you so much for the report